Um, thanks to Art Marathon for this great opportunity to show our work. My name is Loreto Flores. I'm a senior associate of Saha Hadid Architects, and I'm here today to introduce you to the latest addition to the City of Dreams in Macau, the Morpheus Luxury Casino Hotel. So I go with this. Oops. The green one. Um, I could say many things about this building, but I really wanted to summarize in three main concepts that I think are relevant for this presentation. And is somehow what people doesn't see generally in the publications. The first one is the concept and the idea behind the hotel. The second one is our design approach, our design strategy, and the last one is the digital fabrication, which was key to achieve this building. Morpheus takes its name from the Greek god of the dreams, and it was actually conceived as the dream of his owner, Lawrence Ho, CEO of Melco uh, Resort and Entertainment. He wanted to create a unique building for Macau, a landmark, something completely different to what you can see now. Because what you can see now in Macau, in the Cotay Strip, where all the casinos are located, is basically a replica of what happened in Las Vegas. Uh, Lawrence Ho wanted to do this, what he called love letter to the city, and create something completely different. And for that, since 2012, he was looking for an architect that was able to produce this icon, and he found the perfect partner in Saha Hadid. So this is Morpheus. Morpheus is the latest addition to the City of Dreams. The City of Dreams is a complex that already includes four hotels, retail strip, two theaters, F&B, and uh, rest of amenities. The uh, Morpheus Hotel was the last addition to um, this complex that is surrounded by other international casinos like Galaxy, Venetian, MGM, Wynn, etc. But Melco Resorts and Entertainment, and of course ourselves as Saha Hadid Architect, wanted to create something that was a vision for the future of Macau, something different, something that gives a different value to the experience of the users a new chapter in hospitality as well as uh, contemporary luxury. So, which was the design strategy? This was our site. It was already built. It has the foundation of a previous building. Uh, we have to do some demolition. We decided to start with the simple extrusion of the footprint of 50 by 100 meters. Uh, reaching a maximum high of 160 meters because of the aviation regulation. The uh, airport of Macau is really close by. And we got this monolithic block that allowed us to accommodate the maximum amount of rooms per brief that at that moment was 800 rooms. However, we thought that we have to give something else to the city, otherwise we will be creating the same block that uh, is repeated across this, the, the strip. So we decide to create these holes to do this carving operation, somehow inspired by the jade carving work of the Chinese culture, and create this somehow urban voice that are able to connect the north and the south facade of the block, as well as giving us the great opportunity to locate there the public facilities of the whole hotel. The underlying diagram is very simple. Two towers of hotel rooms connected at the bottom and at the top. At the bottom, you have all the common facilities that are also plugged in into the whole complex of the City of Dreams. A spa, uh, restaurants, meeting rooms, etc. In this case, they were designed by um, uh, Remedios Studios at Friedmutter Las Vegas, that are our partners in this uh, global team to achieve Morpheus. And we were um, more concentrated on what happens in the freeform area of this building. The two towers were located on the east and the west side. As you can see in the floor plan, is um, a very regular distribution. Each of them has a dedicated core with six panoramic leaves that allows you to go through the whole building to experience all the voice and really feel 
the architecture, uh, really feel the experience of uh, being inside this building that gives you something else than the, the pure experience of the hotel room. We get to the top where the suites and the sky villas are located. Here you have two options, the opportunity of seeing the internal part of the exoskeleton, this free-form uh, structure to the interior, and to the exterior, of course, the panoramic views of the city. And of course, they are directly linked to the sky pool that sits at the very top. So going back to the central area, which is the feature of the building, this, this free-form area, this sculptural form that allows us to create these very unique spaces. We started with the atrium located at the ground floor. The atrium is the portal, the main entry point to the building, but also to the city of dreams complex. This space somehow is like a cathedral. It's uh, conformed by two feature walls, and it has on top this huge skylight that allows the natural light during the day and, of course, different setups during the night, giving you the feeling of being inside a jewel. So the feature walls are fabricated in aluminium and GRC panels. And, of course, we have this also uh, cells like diamonds backlit that gives the different mood throughout the day. The opposite sides of the uh, atrium are these two red tinted glass backgrounds that serve as the main scenario for the movement of the panoramic leaves. And the last element of the design of this atrium is the marble floor that somehow recreates the pattern of the exoskeleton and the geometry of the feature wall as well. We also design part of the furniture, and in this case, the reception area. Going up into the next void, we have what we call the sky bridges. In the first one, that is in level 20, we have the main restaurant, the Chinese restaurant, and in the last one, the executive lounge. So the Chinese restaurant is located in the middle of these voids and is perhaps the most dramatic space because it's where you can really experience the exoskeleton, the free form up and down. And we create these pots to give a little bit more of privacy to the experience of the dining. This is also supported for these uh, cigar bars, private dining rooms, special lobbies, and also um, bathroom facilities. All of this was within our uh, interior design scope of work. Above the restaurant, there is a mezzanine. This mezzanine is a 20-meter height space, which is an exhibition center, uh, an art gallery, and is able to showcase big scale pieces like the one that we see on the screen. This is the level 30, is the last bridge, and is perhaps uh, the one that you can have better views of the whole city. Going now to the digital fabrication, why the decision of do this exoskeleton? We, we talk about um, this monolithic volume, the carving, the voids, and then how to realize the structure of this building. In order to optimize the space and to get the in, uh, internal spaces free of columns, we thought that we could make we could express the structure outside with this exoskeleton, making it work for lateral stability together with the internal concrete cores. Though this exoskeleton, that is a double facade with the glazing that is inside, is also very complex, and we have to achieve a digital platform to be able to transfer information across disciplines. We have a flat area, but we also have a single curve and a freeform area. This is the first free-form exoskeleton in a high-rise that is also contributing to the structure. And it was achieved, this is a very basic diagram, the, the whole complex, the whole workflow, it was much more um, complicated, but just to make it easier, we started with initial sketches, but those sketches need to be rationalized, need to be converted in a parametric tool, and then in an output, in a model that was able to be used by structural engineers, by manufacturers, by suppliers, to be able to dimension pieces, to arrange the pieces in place, and detect also the clashes. This is a little bit how the process works in between the 3D and 
the fabrication, everything was locally done in China. Materials are well were sourced there. And we are very happy with the high quality standard we achieve in the execution. You can see how breathtaking are these images of this freeform area coming together. And this is the opening back in June of Morpheus and how this big atrium space was used. It was actually the main scenario for the uh, musicians that were playing for, um, for this opening. So then this facade of the atrium was also used as a performance space. So this is Morpheus and I think we achieve a great result in terms of architecture as a structure and vice versa. Thank you. I just have a question to clarify. Uh, yeah. to, because we, it's quite a challenge for us to judge whether it's from architectural point of view or interior design point of view. Mm -hmm. Because I understand that there is a separate interior designer for the project. Could you clarify the scope between yes. two firms? Yeah. Yes. Uh, we were in charge of the whole architecture facade and all the spaces in the freeform area the atrium, the sky bridges. The rooms were done by another interior designer, and then the casino was done by a specialist casino designer from Las Vegas. Thank you so much. Thank you.